let's make these mini stockings. Oh, they're so cute. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the mini rustic stocking Christmas tree ornaments. They're so cute and so tiny. They make up really, really fast. And depending on what color combination you choose, you can either make them more rustic looking, more classic looking. If you're going with the reds and the greens, you can go silver and gold. You can even do kind of like a Dr. Seuss look by making it like hot pink and hot green. <laughs> Just have fun with these. My favorite look though is that rustic old school look. It's just timeless and never goes out of style. So that is what I am going to be showing you in this tutorial today. If at any point in this video you do like what you see or you're enjoying the content, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of all kinds of crochet projects. I'm all over the board making sure that I hit any interest that you may have. And also I do tips and tricks, fun giveaways. There's so much involved. You're not going to want to miss out. So please subscribe. Also check me out on my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, Twitter. That way you can see the behind the scenes of what's going on. You get sneak peeks on what tutorials are coming up. I even ask what tutorials you're interested in. I ask for your feedback. I'm more involved, more engaged in my social media so that way I can keep my YouTube videos more tutorial based if that makes any sense. All right so the pattern for the mini rustic stocking Christmas tree ornaments you can find in both the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link purchase the pattern and be ready to crochet with me. Now you do not have to purchase the pattern in order to make these stockings. I'm going to walk you through step by step everything you need to know to make these stockings in this video. I'm even gonna have little steps on the screen so you can better understand what is going on instead of just relying on my verbal instructions. Sound good? I'm really gonna help you out, but sometimes the pattern really comes in handy if you wanna make more than one of these, but you don't wanna watch my video over and over and over again. <laughs> even though I en enjoy crocheting with you and I would love for you to watch this video over and over again, sometimes the pattern just comes in handy. Also, this pattern is in US terminology. It is considered an easy pattern, beginner or advanced beginner friendly. So I need you to know stitches and where to place stitches in order to accomplish these. If you are brand new to crocheting, make sure you check out my crochet for beginner tutorials. That way you are more confident and less frustrated when accomplishing this project. Sound good? All right, when you are ready, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're gonna need to make these super cute mini rustic stocking Christmas tree ornaments. The materials that we are going to need to make the mini rustic stocking tree ornaments will include a size four weight yarn. This is worsted, medium, Aran, 10, 12 ply or eight WPI sized yarn. I use two different colors, so that way I can have one color be like the toe, heel, and the cuff of the sock, and then the other color can be like the main body of the sock. It just adds some contrast, some nice detail. So you can technically just use one color if you would like. Uh, I'm going to use a crochet hook, size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in your ends, and a stitch marker because we are going to be working in continuous rounds, and that stitch marker will help you to identify when you have ended one round and started to begin the next round. All right, so I'm gonna have the exact colors that I used. I made quite a few different color combinations for my mini rustic stocking tree ornaments. I'm going to have a list of all the colors that I used for those stockings in the note, note section or description section below along with the comment section. So you'll be able to find it all right there as well as in the pattern for these mini rustic stocking tree ornaments, okay? I'm going to have links to everything you see here 
in both the comment section and the description section also. That way, if you need help getting your hands on anything I have, you can just click on that link to purchase it and it'll come straight to you just for ease and convenience. Again, those are affiliated links, which means that the company will give me a small commission if you do purchase anything off of it. So thank you so much. All of those proceeds will just go straight back into my channel if you choose to do that or just use whatever you want hand whatever works best for you. All right, once you have everything you need to make your rustic stockings, let's go ahead and dive right into actually making them. All right, I begin with the color that I want to use for the toe of my stocking. Now, if you want your stocking to be one solid color, you can absolutely begin with that color as well. I start with a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project. I create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, and I'm ready to begin. Now we are working in rounds and in order to work in rounds, you can actually begin two different ways. The first way is the chain two method in which you would just chain two to begin. The second way is the magic ring. So to create the magic ring, you start with your tail, two fingers, wrap your yarn around your two fingers and form an X shape. Then I take my thumb and I place it on the X shape. Take your crochet hook, go under the first yarn, grab the second yarn with the claw, pull that yarn through. Then I remove my fingers, but I keep hold of the ring so I don't lose the ring. And you slip stitch. All right, so slip stitch to secure that ring. Now I can move my fingers and the ring is not going to go anywhere. Okay, we are now set up for round one of our stocking. For round one, you're just making six single crochet stitches inside the magic ring or six single crochet stitches inside the first chain of the chain two method. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, perfect. Now, if you did the chain two method, you're done and you're ready for round two. But for us, with the magic ring, I'm gonna grab the small tail, hold the work back, pull the tail to close that ring, and now I am ready to move on to round two. So let's grab our stitch marker. This is gonna come in handy. Place your stitch marker in your sixth single crochet stitch here. That marks the last stitch of round one and tells us we are ready to move on to round two. For round two, the repeat pattern is making an increased single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. All that means is we're making two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. You should end round two with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So here we go. One, two, three, nine, 10, and our stitch marker is in our last stitch. So let's move our stitch marker. 11, 12, perfect. Okay, so we've actually just finished the toe portion of our stocking. Let's go ahead and slip stitch into the first stitch space here, or the next stitch space, and grab our scissors. Cut a tail long enough for us to weave in that end. Grab that tail, pull through the loop on our crochet hook and pull tight and that's tying off our color or tying off our work. Now, if you wanted to continue using the same exact color throughout the entire stocking, you will not slip stitch. You're just gonna wait for round three, okay? For everyone else, let's grab our next color that we want for the main body of the stocking. Move our scissors. Okay, so starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in that end, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook. Perfect. We are going to slip stitch into the same stitch space that we just slip stitched into to attach our new color. So slip stitch. 
We will chain one. And now we are all set up for round three. For round three, we are making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. We should end with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So starting in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. One, two, three, 11, and 12. Perfect. Okay, so it's important to count here because you may think that this stitch space right here counts as a stitch, but it does not. It's where we slip stitched to close round two. So if we were to put a stitch here, we'd be off count. That's no good. So make sure that you count to a total of 12 stitches, then grab your stitch marker, place your stitch marker in that 12th single crochet stitch, and we can continue on. For round four, we are just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. And we are going to go ahead, because we're working continuous rounds here, we're going to look for that first single crochet stitch and make our first single crochet stitch in that stitch, okay? That closes everything up and makes it look continuous here. For round four, five and six, you're just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You should end each round with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. Go ahead and continue working and I will meet you at the end of round six to show you how we work round seven differently. Two and 12 and this was round six for me. Perfect. Okay, so round seven. For round seven, make one single crochet front loop only in the next six stitches and then make six chains. Now how this is going to look in this next stitch space, I'm going to take my crochet hook. I'm going to find the V stitch on the top of the stitch space, insert my claw of my crochet hook from the front of the work and just pick up that front loop only, leaving behind the back loop of that V stitch. All right, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through both loops on our crochet hook. And that is one single crochet front loop only. Then two, five, and six, perfect. Then make six chains, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to leave the next six stitch spaces unworked. We are making the heel of our stocking. Find where your stitch marker is. That stitch marker indicates the last stitch space of the round. We want to slip stitch into that stitch space to close round seven. Okay, so remove that stitch space or that stitch marker, slip stitch into that stitch space. Perfect. Place that stitch marker back into that same stitch space. And we've just finished round seven. For round eight, we wanna make one single crochet stitch in each stitch and in each chain all the way around the loop, okay? You should end with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. There's the six stitches. Now we're on to the six chains. One, two, three, four. five, and come on, there we go, six, perfect. Okay, so where that stitch marker is was where we slip stitched to close round seven, okay? So I'm going to move my stitch marker out of the way and then I'm not going to make a stitch in there because I don't want to mess up my count here. I want to keep 12 stitches. So I'm going to actually start in that first stitch space. One, place my stitch marker in the single crochet stitch that I ended with the chains. 
okay? And now I'm gonna continue on making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around for round nine and for round 10, you should end round nine and round 10 with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. Now, just to make sure I explain this right, if you lift up the heel, look at your chains here, where you made your last single crochet stitch in that last chain, that's where you're putting your stitch marker. That is now your last stitch space. This is stitch number one of round nine. Two, three, 11, and 12. Move my stitch marker. Replace my stitch marker. <laughs> One, two, three, ten, eleven, and move my stitch marker. Twelve. Okay, so we have just finished the dark portion of the stocking. I'm about to move on to the cuff portion of the stocking. Now, for the cuff, I change colors. I will make the same color as I did with the toe. So to change colors, I'm going to slip stitch into the very next stitch space over, which would be first the first stitch of round 11. I'm gonna grab my scissors, cut a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends, Yarn over, pull through the loop on my crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off, and now I'm ready to switch colors. So grabbing my first color, creating a tail long enough for me to, to weave in my ends, my slip stitch, slip knot, attach my crochet hook. I'm going to slip stitch into the same stitch I just slip stitched into. And that will be how I attach my new color. Perfect. I'm going to chain one, single crochet into the same stitch that I just slip stitched into, and make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. I should end with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So one, two, three, eleven, and 12, place my stitch marker into that 12th single crochet stitch. There we go. Perfect. Now for round, I'm gonna take this tail and I'm actually going to put it inside the stocking so I can keep all those together. Now for round 12 through round 15, you're just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You should end each round, round 12 through round 15 should end with 12 single crochet stitches. Now for this 12th round, it's the one where you're gonna have to hop over this gap, find the first single crochet stitch, and make one single crochet stitch into that first single crochet stitch, and that closes that gap space and allows you to keep going in continuous rounds. All right, go ahead and continue making one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. I will meet you at the end of round 15 to show you what we do next. 11 and 12, great, I've just made it to the end of round 15. So I'm going to close off my cuff by slip stitching into the next stitch over slip stitch, grab my scissors, cut a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project, yarn over that tail, pull that tail through the loop on my crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off, and I have just finished the cuff portion of my stocking. The next thing that we're going to work on is the heel of our stocking. So I like to make the heel the same color as the toe and the cuff beginning with a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends, create my slip knot, touch my crochet hook. Here we go. So looking at my heel, there should be a total of six stitch spaces across. Cause remember I did skip six stitch spaces, but then I did slip stitch into that sixth stitch 
to close or end round seven. So in this last or sixth stitch, there should be a slip stitch and we will actually be doubling up into that stitch to work the heel, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. So looking at the first stitch space that is unworked, I'm going to insert my crochet hook, slip stitch to attach my color or my new yarn, chain one, and to begin round one of my heel, I will make a single crochet two tog, which just means single crochet two stitch spaces together. So insert my crochet hook into that same stitch space I just slip stitched into, yarn over, pull through, take my crochet hook, insert into the next stitch space over, yarn over, pull through. I have three loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and that turns two stitch spaces into one. Make one single crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. So one, two, and then single crochet two tog the next two stitch spaces together. So one, and in that next, next stitch space, two, and then pull yarn over, pull through to make two stitch spaces into one. Perfect. Now let's start working on the top here. Okay, so first stitch space and second stitch space, we're going to single crochet two tog. One, two, make one single crochet in the next two stitch spaces. One, two, and then single crochet two tog the last two stitch spaces. Perfect, okay, so that was round one of our heel. Now for round two, we're going to single crochet two tog, the first two stitches together, the next two stitches together, the top two stitches together, and the last two stitches together. So technically we're doing four single crochet two togs in a row. All right, so first stitch and second stitch together third and fourth together, turn it over, fifth and sixth, lastly, seventh and eight. Yarn over, pull through, and that ends round two. Now we've already pretty much closed the heel, so what I'm going to do is slip stitch into the very first stitch space. So what I will do is I will take the work, try to show you as best as I possibly can. So here is the whole of the work, okay? I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the hole, out that first stitch space, Yarn over, pull through, and pull that yarn through Oops. the loop on your crochet hook for a slip stitch to close up that hole. And we have just finished the heel of the stocking. Grab your scissors, cut long enough tail for us to weave in our ends. Yarn over that tail, pull through the loop on your crochet hook and pull tight. Now, if you see any big holes or big gaps, we will address those when we weave in our ends to close up any of the holes or major openings. We're just gonna take our yarn needle or tapestry needle and help to close up any of those gaps as we are weaving in our ends, okay? Last thing that we are going to make to complete the stocking is the little loop on the inside of the stocking so we can hang the stocking on our Christmas tree. The easiest way to do this is to turn our stocking inside out. So take your stocking, turn it inside out. Here we go. Flatten it so it's flat sideways. Now for me, I like to make the loop the same color as the cuff, but you can do whatever you want. Start with a tail long enough for you to weave in your ends. Make your slip knot, attach your crochet hook. Okay, so looking at your stocking, keeping it flat, I pinch it, pinch it flat. 
where the two colors meet, or if you are keeping it one solid color, this would be four, four rows, one, two, three, four, five, five rows, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five rows down from the top. Okay, so insert into those two stitch holes or stitch spaces across. Slip stitch to attach your yarn. Chain 10. One, two, nine, ten, and then slip stitch in the same stitch space through one side out the other that you've already entered in. Slip stitch to close the loop, and there's your little loopy. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in your end. Yarn over that tail, pull it through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight to tie it off. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two tails, the tail I began with and the tail I ended with, and I'm gonna tie two knots, one, two, just to extra secure this whole loop. And then when you weave in your ends, color to color, that way it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, it, it's just extra secure, extra strong. All right, okay, so the only ends that I want to address here to weave in are the ones for the heel because I think all the other ends, they aren't as pertinent or important to weave in as the heel because the heel you'll see has a lot of like openings that may bother some people. But I fixed those holes with my weaving in of my ends. So taking my yarn needle, okay, so making sure I place a finger on the inside so I don't sew, sew the two sides together and so I can easily identify where there are any gaps. I'm gonna take this yarn and I'm gonna go here and close up that hole and then go straight over close up that hole and then go back, close up that hole. And I'm really just going to be weaving all over the place, back and forth. The more you can go back and forth, the stronger it will be. And the more you can get the yarn to go through the other yarns instead of just going in and out, but actually going between fibers, the stronger your weaving in of your ends will be and your ends will stay put, okay? And then once you've finished your one side as best as you like, or if you just run out of yarn, just cut your yarn as close to the work as you can and then grab the other string and do the same thing. Place a finger on the inside, look for any major holes and just close those up, conceal those, and it will look so much better. Perfect, all right, that's it. That is how you make this stocking. Once you've woven in all of your ends, your stocking is done. And what I will do, yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of that. I will fold the cuff over here, I'm gonna, Keep the loop out, but take all those tails and tuck those in so you can't see them right off the bat. But I'll fold over that cuff and then you have your cute little stocking. You can place something in there if you want or just hang on your tree. So what did you think of the mini rustic stocking Christmas tree ornaments? 
How was the pattern? Was there any parts that you have any questions on? Please leave those questions in the comment section below this video. That way I can help you through any parts that may have not been super clear, okay? Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced level crocheter and you see a question from a beginner or somebody that had a question about this pattern and you know the answer, but you noticed I haven't responded to that question yet, if you could help me out and help out that beginner or that question, that would be incredible. Let's just form this community, helping each other grow and get better and just help them through this crochet project so they can have the best experience possible. That would be amazing. I get a lot of questions and sometimes I can't get to every answer or I can't answer every question or get to everybody. So if you know the answer to a question that has been asked, that would be awesome for us to just help each other grow and grow this community. It, it's just a beautiful thing. All right, if you had fun with this pattern, you might also really love this these videos right here. They're more Christmassy crochet videos. Also check out this video right here, which is it's just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always have so much fun crocheting with you. If you had a great time, please push that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.